So suppose the solar technology advances very well. Okay, yes. We're able to capture a lot of sun energy with very high efficiency. So marginal cost of solar becomes zero. Then would the proof of work work in that case? Suppose the marginal cost of solar. That's a good question. Suppose that solar energy advances with um, its efficiency, and you can capture a lot of the solar energy. Would that make proof of work unworkable? Because the marginal cost of the solar energy is zero. Well, yes and no. Um, mostly no. Even if you have really efficient solar energy, uh, you have to consider three factors in that. The first one is that um, you pay for the solar panels, so you have capital cost. Right? The second is you pay for the mining equipment, and so you have more capital cost. Right? Competition depends on marginal cost. Yes, but at the same, we have enough accumulated capital. Yes, but at the same time, you're competing against people who are going to apply more and more capital. But the third one, and the most important one, is that presumes you have basically no opportunity cost, meaning that there is no other use that the energy could go to other than mining. Meaning that either you've so far exceeded the demand for electricity that you have all of this excess capacity. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Right. The problem is at that point we've solved the energy problem of the world. <laughs> and at that point, if proof of work is the one thing that doesn't work, you've gone to a Star Trek universe where money doesn't exist. <laughs> right? If you solve the fundamental issue of energy scarcity on this planet, um, completely solve it, for the marginal cost to go to zero, you have to have zero opportunity cost, which means that you can generate abundant energy anywhere, anytime, and always have excess capacity. Um, you you solved much bigger problems. I hope we get there. Um, then we need someone as brilliant as Satoshi Nakamoto to come up with a new proof of work algorithm. Um, I would suggest Sudoku. Uh, <laughs> it works. Uh, so Sudoku is uh, an asymmetric algorithm, meaning that if you make the Sudoku puzzle bigger, it still can be verified relatively quickly as to whether it's correct. If you make it billions and billions and billions of times bigger, um, uh, then it gets really, really hard. And you could make it to so that you only have to do it on paper with pencil with human beings. <laughs> so that would be a proof of well, literally proof of work algorithm, just like the slaves of Egypt who built the pyramids. <laughs> Salt Sudoku harder. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Another another problem with what he's saying is that the other party will have the same technology. Well, it equalizes everybody. So then it's about access to miners, access to internet capacity, access to storage to put the blockchain on. There's still costs. And secondly, the, you're still limited by the amount of solar radiation received, which is 2,000 watts per square meter. So that's the maximum energy you can actually. You're limited by 2,000 watts per square meter, which is the maximum energy you can get on the surface. Which means mining in space. <laughs> space. Actually, that's not a joke. Um, there are many reasons why mining in space could become a very interesting possibility. Solar panels, no atmosphere, no obscuring anything. Yeah.